Hello and welcome to a lesson on CERDs. This lesson is equally applicable to higher tier GCSE and to the early modules of A-level. In this lesson we'll derive the two main rules for CERDs and then we'll look at examples of the three tasks that often occur on exam papers. To begin then let's consider the number root A times root B multiplied by itself root A times root B. The brackets have no mean in this in this instance because there's no plus or minus signs. So I can just remove the brackets and say that this is equal to the square root of A multiplied by the square root of B multiplied by the square root of A multiplied by the square root of B. But if A and B are just ordinary numbers, the order in which we multiply doesn't matter. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So let me swap these two round here and write this as the square root of a multiplied by the square root of a multiplied by the square root of b multiplied by the square root of b. But now I can look and say well root a times root a is a. Root a is the number which multiplied by itself gives you a. Multiplied by root b times root b is b. So that's a times b, which I might write as ab. So what we've got here is the number in this bracket multiplied by itself gives you ab. Well that means that the bracket is actually the square root of ab. It's the number which multiplied by itself gives you ab. So I can say therefore root a multiplied by root b, the thing we have in the bracket, is equal to the square root of the number ab. And that's our first rule for thirds. The square root of a multiplied by the square root of b is equal to the square root of a times b, which I'll write as ab. Moving on now to derive our second rule, let's consider the square root of a over the square root of b multiplied by itself. And to multiply two fractions, we multiply the numerators, so that's root a multiplied by root a, and we multiply the denominators, root b multiplied by root b. But if we look at the numerator now, root a multiplied by root a, is just a. And the denominator, root b times root b, is just b. So we now have this number multiplied by itself is a over b. So it must be the square root of a over b. So we have root a over root b is equal to the square root of a over b. And that gives us our second rule for thirds. The square root of a divided by the square root of b is equal to the square root of the whole fraction, a over b. So if we want the square root of a fraction, we just need to take the square root of the top and divide that by the square root of the bottom. So we've now got rules that work for multiplication and division of numbers. However, now we come across a caution. These methods don't have any parallel in addition and subtraction. If you've got the square root of a plus the square root of b, that is not equal to the square root of a plus b. And we can show that by looking at a counterexample. One counterexample will show that it doesn't work. For instance, what if we look at the square root of 4 plus the square root of 9? Let's suppose it is equal to the square root of 4 plus 9. And now let's check the working. Square root of 4 is 2 plus the square root of 9 is 3 equals the square root of 13 is about 3.6. Well, that's clearly not true. 5 is not equal to 3.6. And so this relationship is not true. Second example here, let's suppose again we've got root 9 
minus root 4. And let's suppose that's equal to the square root of 9 minus 4. Well, we'll check it. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So on the left-hand side, I have 3 take away 2 is 1. And here, I have root 5, which is about 2.2. Well, 1 is not the same as 2.2, so this is not a true statement. And up here, root a minus root b is not equal to the root of a minus b. So we have our two rules. A summary of those two rules. Root a times root b is the root of a times b. And the root of a divided by the root of b is the root of a over b. With our two rules, we'll now tackle typical exam questions. Task 1, simplifying thirds. If we picked thirds at random, they probably wouldn't simplify at all. But if an exam question asks you to simplify thirds, they'll have been specially selected to make sure they do simplify. And what we do is we look for perfect squares that are factors of these numbers here. And I've written the perfect squares down the bottom here. And I can see that 8 is 4 times 2. So I can rewrite this expression as the square root of 4 times 2. Plus, the square root of 18, I can write 18 as 9 times 2. The square root of 50, I can write 50 as 25 times 2. Now, using our first rule of thirds, root of a times b is the root of a times the root of b. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. So what does that give us? The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times root 2, I'll write as 2 root 2. Plus, the square root of 9 is 3, 3 times root 2 is 3 root 2. Plus, the square root of 25 is 5, and 5 times root 2 is 5 root 2. So our final answer, 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2 is 10 root 2. And that is the simplification. Now, normally, we wouldn't put that line in there. We would go straight from here to this line. Just think of it as pulling out of the square root of 4 outside the root sign. Square root of 4 is 2, so you get 2 root 2. The 2 is staying under the root sign. Pull out the square root of 9, and you get 3 root 2. Pull out the square root of 25, and you get 5 root 2. And that's the approach we'll take with this second example. So, root 20. Which perfect square is a factor of 20? 4. So we can write that as 4 times 5 under the square root sign. Plus 2 times the square root of which perfect square is contained as a factor of 45? 9. 9 times 5. And this last one doesn't simplify at all. 3 root 5 is in its simplest form. So now I can pull the square root of 4 out the front and I get 2 root 5. Plus, I can pull the square root of 9 out the front and I get 2 times 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 root 5. plus 3 root 5. Now it's just a matter of collecting the root 5s together. 2 plus 6 plus 3 of them is 11 of them. So final answer, 11 root 5. Moving on to task 2, multiplying thirds or multiplying brackets involving thirds. And we look at three examples. First of all, 5 plus root 2 multiplied by 3 plus root 2. Ordinary multiplication of brackets, 
3 times 5 is 15. 3 times plus root 2 is plus 3 root 2. Plus root 2 times 5 is 5 root 2. And finally root 2 times root 2 is 2. Plus times a plus is a plus, so it's plus 2. It's very much like if you had 5 plus x multiplied by 3 plus x. That would be 3 times x, that would be 5 times x, but instead it's 3 times root 2 and 5 times root 2. The only difference is instead of having an x squared, we end up with a root 2 squared, which is 2. Now, we collect together like terms, we can collect together ordinary numbers. 15 plus 2 is 17, and collect together the root 2s. Plus 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2 is plus 8 root 2. Moving on to example 4. 3 times 1 is equal to 3. 1 times minus 2 root 3 is minus 2 root 3. Plus 4 root 3 times 3 is plus 12 root 3. And finally, a plus times a minus is going to give us a negative term. It's 4 root 3 times 2 root 3. 4 times 2 is 8. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. And 8 times 3 is 24. So it's all been multiplied together. Because this literally means 2 times root 3 times 4 times root 3. 2 times 4 is 8. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. And 8 times 3 is 24. Collect together like terms, whole numbers, I've got 3 minus 24 is minus 21. And minus 2 root 3 plus 12 root 3 is plus 10 root 3. One final example of this type. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times plus root 5 is plus root 5. Minus root 3 times 2 is minus 2 root 3. Minus times a plus is a minus for this last term. Root 3 times root 5, using our first rule of indices, root 3 times root 5 is root 15. Now that certainly hasn't simplified matters. We've got root 5s, root 3s, root 15s, and we can't collect any of them together. So we just have to leave the answer in that form. The last task we're going to look at, task 3, is that of rationalising denominators. And that means writing a number where the denominator does not contain a square root sign. It's a whole number. We've got three examples to look at. 3 over root 7. Now our approach to this is to multiply the top and bottom by root 7. So we multiply by root 7 over root 7. And of course, if we multiply both the top and bottom of a fraction by the same number, we don't change its value. Having done that, we can work out the numerator. 3 times root 7 is 3 root 7. And the denominator is root 7 times root 7, which is 7. And there's the answer without a root sign in the denominator. Two more examples to look at. I don't think you'd find either of these on a GCSE paper. This is more A-level standard work. But I, th I would say to GCSE students, stick with it. Find out what this is about. 3 over 5 plus root 2. I want to rationalise the denominator. So we start with 3 over 5 plus root 2. And we make use of the technique of the difference of two squares. I want to get in the denominator a plus b times a minus b because that would then give me a squared minus b squared. So what I'm going to multiply by, I'm going to let that be my a plus b, I need an a minus b here. So this time the fraction I'm going to multiply by is 5 minus root 2 over 5 minus root 2. Now, because I'm multiplying the top and bottom by the same thing, 
it doesn't change the value of the overall expression. But now we multiply the numerators, we multiply the denominators. So first of all, 3 times 5 minus root 2. 3 times 5 is 15. And 3 times minus root 2 is minus 3 root 2. For the denominator, I've got 5 squared minus root 2 squared. Now let's check where that's coming from. If I've got a plus b times a minus b, they're the factors of a squared minus b squared. So if I've got a plus b times a minus b, I get a squared minus b squared. In this case, a is 5 and b is root 2. So what does that give me? 15 minus 3 root 2 on the top. And on the bottom, 5 squared is 25. Root 2 squared is 2. 25 minus 2 is 23. And there's the answer. And the denominator no longer has a root sign. It's OK to leave it like that. Or you could split it and say that's 15 over 23 minus 3 root 2 over 23. If you've got a single denominator, we can just divide each term on the top by that quantity. Final example. This is equal to 2 plus root 3 over 2 root 3 minus 1. Now, what am I going to multiply the top and bottom by this time? Well, I'm going to treat this as my a minus b, so I'll need to multiply by an a plus b. So this time, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 2 root 3 plus 1 over 2 plus 3, sorry, 2 root 3 plus 1. As long as I multiply the top and bottom by the same thing, it doesn't change the value. So now let's work out the multiplication of the numerators. I've got 2 root 3 times 2 is 4 root 3. 2 root 3 times root 3 is 2 times 3, which is plus 6. Plus 1 times 2 is plus 2. And finally, plus 1 times plus root 3 is plus root 3. What about the denominator? Well, it's this squared minus this squared. So it's 2 root 3 squared minus 1 squared, using the difference of two squares factorization. What does that come to? Well, on the top, I've got 4 root 3 plus root 3 is 5 root 3. And collecting the whole numbers, plus 6 plus 2 is plus 8. And the denominator, 2 root 3 times 2 root 3. 2 times 2 is 4. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. So that becomes 12. 1 squared is 1. 12 minus 1 is 11. And again, you could leave the answer like that, or you could split it into 2 and say that's 5 root 3 over 11 plus 8 elevenths. In both cases, the denominator is rationalised. It's now a whole number. Right, that concludes this lesson on SIRDs. You'll now find an exercise where you can practice all the techniques you've learned.